I have never before ordered a key wound movement that didn't automatically come with a key. There was no key came with this one. So you're probably looking and you see, well, there's a couple of keys there. Well, like I've been doing this for 40, 50 years, I've accumulated some extra keys. Anyway, uh, that's odd, no key. But uh, according to the place that I bought it from, they don't supply a key with this one. They probably took the keys out and are selling them separately. That's what I think is happening. But anyway, uh, yeah. Now another thing that's not a problem, but I got to be uh, aware of it, is that my dial board, and that includes the thickness of the dial, which is practically nothing. It's just a thin aluminum dial. It can't be more than three eighths of an inch in diameter. Now I thought that I had ordered the movement that had the longer hand shaft, but apparently I didn't. But you know, I just have to remember when I'm designing my case that my dial board, and by the way, now there is going to be a dial board. Uh, it, uh, like I say, it can't be more than three eighths of an inch thick. And right now I'm kind of thinking I'll take and resaw a three quarter inch piece of wood, uh, you know, a piece of that uh, walnut. And uh, that'll be, well, less the thickness of the blade. It'll be pretty well just right, if everything goes well. Um, but, uh, you know, I hate to just use plywood. I want to try and keep walnut all the way throughout. At least everything you see, I want to be solid walnut, not a veneer. Uh, what else was interesting? Uh, I have tons of little screws, so I don't need to worry about not having screws that are only 3 eighths of an inch long. Uh, and in the event that uh, uh, I can't find a four or, or whatever, just the right length, I can always cut these down. And then I've got more in my uh, little toolbox over there. Uh, I save stuff like that, so, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 years later when I need it, I've got it. Anyway, I'm killing more time. Approximately, in fact not approximately, exactly a little over four years ago, I made ten small mantel clocks as Christmas gifts. And I gave them all away. I don't even have one left for myself. And this clock that I'm going to do right now, it's going to be something along the same line. It'll be about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm not planning on turning any spindles. You may recall that earlier in this series I was talking about my grandfather's mantel clock. Well, this is it. I came across a video clip that I took about four years ago. And there's a real interesting story behind this clock. At least it's interesting to me because it's how I got started or interested in mechanical clockworks. So I may as well start at the beginning. I still got the works. Uh, the clock itself is at my daughter's place. It's got an electronic movement in it now. And uh, this has got to be well over 100 years old because it was around 1900 that my grandfather got that for his mother, my great-grandmother. And uh, anyway, I didn't see it until, oh, around the 1950s, I guess. But uh, the story goes, in fact, it's a true story, if you were to wind the gong side up too tight, it would start gonging, but it wouldn't stop until it wound itself almost halfway down. And uh, anyway, I ended up with this clock. And, uh, oh, first of all, uh, when my grandparents had it here in Winnipeg, uh, one time they did wind it too tight, and my dad and his brother were the only kids in the house, and my and um, my uncle Frank, when he would start to laugh, he wasn't able to stop. And I guess the clock was gonging, and the kid was laughing, and my grandfather was getting madder and madder. So you can picture it. Anyway, it's, to me that's an interesting story. So anyway, you wind it too tight, it won't stop gonging. I ended up with this clock around the early 1970s. I had it in my uh, cabin up at Dory Lake. I just want to quickly interrupt here. Yes, that's the clock in my cabin at Dory Lake. And yes, that's me. I have no idea what happened. 
I should still look like that, right? Anyway, another thing. Those magazines to my left, those are all popular photography and the like. I was not supporting Heff's mansion. When I wound it up too tight, sure enough, I do actually recall it ringing or gonging 56 o'clock. I can remember that really well. And uh, I thought to myself, I should see if I can fix this thing. So I opened the back of the clock and I could see that it wasn't too hard to get the movement out and I set it up very similar to what you see right here. And then I, I watched it. I turned the hands ahead and it would start to gong and sure enough, it just wouldn't stop gonging. And so I was watching the, the uh, drivetrain and all the little levers and so on and I saw what was wrong. And all I had to do was just bend something a little bit. I can't remember what anymore. But I just had to bend something slightly. Problem solved. That's how I got started. Uh, this is the very first time I ever worked on a mechanical movement. And this would be around 1971. Yeah, I wish I could turn this clock back to those years.